So I ran into this random circle problem here, um, which I, I really don't remember where I saw it. I doubt anyone has uh, anyone watching has seen it before either. Um, but yeah, I, I, this question, three quest circles, they're all identical, radius four, and you're supposed to work out this shaded region. So um, I thought I'd go through this. I've got a few different ways to do it. As you can see, the video is quite long. I've put quite a lot of time uh, into this question because I do think it's very interesting. And even more than that, actually, I thought, what if these weren't just circles? And these weren't just areas. What if you made them spheres and you were looking at this kind of volume in the middle? Um, wouldn't that be a question? So I'll do that at the end as well. So I've got a few methods to do this base question in 2D and then I'll look at the uh, the 3D question later on. So anyway, uh, let's go through this then. So I, I mean firstly I'm assuming that you haven't seen this question before because uh, like I said I, I don't know where I found it. Probably quite a niche place. Um, so do have a go at it first. Otherwise, um, here's my method number one. It's the method that I came up with when I saw the question for the first time. Not the most efficient, of course, because the first time you solve a maths problem, it's probably not going to be the most efficient solution ever. Um, but it is pretty. It gets the job done. And it tells you how I was thinking about it, because this is exactly how I thought about it. It's the first time I did it. Um, so, okay, so the radius of the circle is a four. We've got that down. Um, the first thing I said was, well, okay, these areas here are just the whole circle in the middle take away these two weird egg shapes on the sides. So, okay, I know the circle in the middle is just pi times four squared, so 16 pi. So I can move the question back from not really needing to work out these areas, but instead to focusing on working out these areas, which of course are the same by symmetry. So I can actually just work out one of them and then work out and then double it for the other one. So, okay, I've moved the problem to now just working out these two bits, fine. Um, the next thing I saw was if you draw a line from the center to the edge, now clearly that length is four, but what if you just keep going around, hitting all of the important intersections and centers? Then you make a really nice hexagon. And I saw that within sort of five or 10 seconds of doing this problem, and I just ran with it. You know, I just ran with it. I thought that's really cool. Probably a way to solve this by thinking about that. Let's just run with it. So I did. Um, and, and, and what I can say is, well, these lengths are all four, as I said, because they're the radius of the circle. Now, what about these two lengths? It, it's tempting to just say, oh yeah, they're four as well, but let's just very quickly prove it. Um, it's definitely four from here to this edge here, because that's a radius. And it's also definitely four um, from here up to here. Maybe less obvious, but that's also just a radius of the middle circle. So that is also just four. Um, so these are equal, this is an equilateral triangle, and, and likewise all the way around you'd have lots of equilateral triangles. Um, this is 60 of course, which means you've also got an equilateral triangle over here because this length is also 4 for the same reason, which means this uh, angle is also 60 because angles on a line are 180, which means that this triangle up here is also equilateral, which is really important. It means I can say this is 4 and so this is actually just a regular hexagon. And that's really nice because Actually, uh, I do a lot of GCSE exam papers, which has no relevance to this question in particular, but on the GCSE exam in 2019 higher paper, it asked you to work out the area of a hexagon, um, which was cool, so I know how to do that. Uh, it's just six equilateral triangles. Um, it, each one is, is obviously a half times four times four times sine 60. So the area of this hexagon is a half times four times four times sine 60, and then there are six of those triangles going all the way around. So it's six lots of that. Four times four is 16, halved is eight, Sine 60, I'm assuming that we'll all do this question without our calculator because why wouldn't you? Um, calculators are trash anyway. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Um, so you had 8 here, divided by 2 is 4, so this is 4 root 3 times 6 is 24 root 3. And now my idea is I can do the area of the middle circle take away the area of the hexagon. And that will give me all of the outsidey bits like this, which seem helpful. So that's just going to be pi times 4 squared, which is 16 pi, take away this here. That's going to be all of those. And now I'll explain why in a second, but I'm going to divide that by 3 to get this. Obviously, 24 divided by 3 is 8, and this divided by 3 is this. And the reason I've done that is because right now there are 6 of them, right? 6 of these little bits around the outside, and I only want 2. And now the reason I want 2 is because if I go back to this thing up here, now this is 120 because it's just a regular hexagon, as we've said. So this is 120. The reason I wanted two of these little bits is because, again, keeping your eye on the prize, going all the way back, I wanted to know this egg shape. And this egg shape is just this sector in here plus two of these bits. So all I need to do is work out the area of this sector, which is going to be 120 over 360 times four, pi times 4 times 4, and add the two bits that I've just described here. Okay, And that will be one of the egg shapes. 
So I can do that. 120 for 60 is a third, so that's going to be that. Um, same denominator to put them together. And that's one of the egg shapes. So the final answer will just be this circle, which again is just pi r squared, 16 pi. Take away two lots of what I just worked out. Again, running through the algebra, and you end up with this as our final answer. Um, and so that was my first method. It's not too bad, but it's certainly not the most efficient thing you can come up with. Um, so now I'll show you what so far myself and my crack team of mathematicians have come up with our most efficient method, which is, okay, go back to this point. Um, don't need to do any of the work we did before, except you do need to justify why this is 120. Um, so you would need to draw a couple of equilateral triangles and say 60, 60, okay, so 120. And now let's just have a quick change of perspective for what we're looking for. Instead of looking for these egg shapes, let's just look for half of them. So instead of looking for this and doing this, I'm just going to do circle, take away four lots of these, because of course this is just half of that. So instead of taking away two lots of this, I'm going to take four lots of that away instead. And now the reason I'm doing that is because this is actually super easy to work out. It's just, it's just a couple of lines. Right? You might have seen this already in, 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 in various places. Um, the area of a segment like this is just the area of the sector, the same sector we worked out before, take away this triangle. That will give you that thing, that blue thing there. So the sector is 120 over 360 times 16 pi, and the triangle is a half times 4 times 4 times sine 120. Now, you might not know a sine of 120 off the top of your head. Again, we're pretending not to use calculators here at all. Um, you could draw the sine graph and work out that it's the same as sine 60, or you could cut this in half um, and just use like 60 degrees and say this is 2 because it's half of this thing here. And you could even do Pythagoras to work out this length and then just ignore sine 60 at all. In any case, um, eventually you'll work out that it's going to be this for the blue thing. And then you just need to do 16 pi, which is the middle circle, take away four lots of what we just found. And again, you'll end up with the same thing we had before. That's probably the most efficient way that exists. We, we couldn't find anything um, much better than that. It's not my favorite way, though. Um, my favorite method, and the reason it's my favorite method, is because all of the other methods that me and my team have found are, are just various different ways of doing this and the previous method, right? Some are more efficient than others, but it's all just about trying to find some triangles and some circles, taking away bits from other bits and finding the thing. Um, and again, some methods are more efficient than others, but the difference between this method is it's completely different. It doesn't do any of that. Um, and so that's why I like it. I'm going to draw this triangle in first. Um, obviously, these are radiuses of the center circle, so they're length 4. We already said that this is 4 and this is 60. So again, if you're doing this method from scratch, you would need to justify all of that. But I've already done that in this video, so I'm just going to run with it. What I'm going to say is that this weird funnel shape with a flat top, I'm just going to call that A. And then this sec segment at the top, which is flat and then round here, I'm going to call that B. Um, and by symmetry, this is also B, and this is also B, because all the circles are identical, so you've got the same curves going on here. And now, let's think about what I need. I need the orange area, which is two lots of A plus two lots of B. So if I could just work out what A and B are, I just need two lots of A and two lots of B, and that would be the answer. So how do I work out what A and B are? Well, look at this here that I've drawn. That's just a sector. Uh, angle 60, radius 4. And it's A plus 3 lots of B. So A plus 3B is 60 over 360 times 16 pi, just the area of that sector, which is a 6. This is a 6, so it's 16 pi over 6. But also here, I've got a triangle with sides 4, 4, angle 60, and that's A plus 2B. So A plus 2B is just this triangle which I can work out. It's a half times 4 times 4 times sine 60. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2, as we already said, and so we get this. And this is two equations with two unknowns. So it's just a similar to this equation. Do this one, take away this one. A take away A is nothing. 3B take away 2B is B. This take away that is that. And we work out B. If you've got a similar to this equation and you know one of them, you just substitute it in to find the other one. So substitute this into here times it by 2, take it away from the other side, and we find A. And remember, the answer was 2 lots of A, so double this, plus 2 lots of that. Go through the algebra, and you end up with your correct answer. So that was my favorite method that I've found so far. Um, there are probably other ways to do it as well. Um, this video goes on for a little bit longer, as you might have been able to tell. I did promise to do it in 3D as well towards the end, but before I do that, 
um, I did want to go through method number four. Um, and method number four is, um, I don't know why I said examiner here, because I don't know, uh, this wasn't really from an exam, was it? So I'm not, I don't know where it was from. Um, but method number four is how, if someone was marked, if this was an exam and someone was marking it, method number four is about how to let that person know and the invalidators and everyone in the room that you perhaps theoretically did the exam with and anyone theoretically watching your YouTube video that you are a god um, and this question was a bit too easy for you. Um, and the way that you can do that is just slice this up. So slice it down there, slice it across there. And now instead of considering the entire picture, just consider this section. Because if you could just work out this weird area here, you could just times it by four for the final answer. So I'm not going to consider the rest of this. I'm just going to consider this section up here. And what else am I going to do? Well, I'm going to call this cut Y and this one X. And now I have an X, Y axis. And these are circles on the X, Y axis. This is a circle centered at zero, radius four. So it's X squared plus Y squared equals four squared, which is 16. And this is a circle shifted four places to the right. So just by graph transformations, it's X minus four squared plus Y squared equals 16. Um, and like I said, I'm just going to consider this part of the picture and then we're going to work out this area times it by four for the answer. Now, people who know where I'm going with this are terrified because where I'm going with this is so bad. And people, and then there are another group of people who just have no idea what's about to happen. Um, and boy, are you in for a treat. There's this thing in A-level maths called integration and it works out the areas underneath curves. So what I can do is I can say, if I integrate this equation, between zero and this point here, I'll work out all of the area in this kind of trapezium with a curved edge. And then if I integrate this curve between zero and this point here, I'll work out all of this area here. And so then if I just take away the answer to this one, take away the answer to this one, then I'll get this area here, right? Um, and then I just need to times that answer by four and I'll get everything that I wanted. So. Uh, firstly, I'll have to work out this point here because again, I was integrating from here to here. So let's work out this point. That's just the intersection between here and here. So set them equal to each other. 16 is already equal, so that's fine. You can just set the rest of it equal. The y's cancel immediately. The, you expand out the x squared's cancel as well and you get x is two, which was clear because the whole thing is symmetrical anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna integrate this curve between zero and two. And then I'm gonna take away the integral of this curve between zero and two. That gives me this answer, this area here, times it by four, I'll get the answer. Now, the reason that this is terrible is because integrating this turns out not to be very easy at all. Um, I said this was an A-level maths, but even a very strong A-level maths candidate would find this, what I'm about to do, very tough. Um, you need to integrate y, and, and this isn't given in y. Um, so let's rearrange for y. So move the x squared over root. Now this could be a plus minus, except I'm only dealing with things where y is positive because I chose to ignore the rest of the graph. So I don't need a minus here and, 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 and only choosing this area of the graph and then timesing the answer by four is much easier than considering the plus minus case. That's why I did it. Um, so, okay, I need to integrate this um, with respect to x between zero and two. And then I need to take away the integral. Well, let's rearrange with this one for y. It's basically the same. Um, and, and this will be what I need to do. Now, and then of course, I'll just need to times all of this by four and I'll have my answer. So I can ignore the picture now. I can ignore basically everything. I just need to integrate, do this, work this out, times it by four, and I'll have my answer. So when you're integrating between the same two things, you've got two integrals between the same two things, you can bring them together. Now I considered it and I didn't think it was actually gonna work that well, so I didn't bother. Um, what I did instead was just consider them separately. So let's consider this integral first. Now, if you haven't seen an integral of this type before, um, then, then, then strap in. The, the, the way to do it is to make a substitution of x equals sine u. Actually, x equals four sine u, and you'll see why in a second. Um, if I square that, I get 16 sine squared u, clearly. And if I differentiate it, I get dx over du is four cos u, because sine differentiates to cos, times everything by du, and we get this. And so I can put this x squared into here, and I can put this dx into there, but I also need to change the limits. So when x is two, what is u? So, so, so put two into there, solve for u, divide by four, and then sine of pi over six is a half. So u is pi over six, so that's gonna change to a pi over six. When x is zero, this one is a bit easier. You get zero is four sine u, divide by four is still zero and u is zero. 
Um, and so this becomes my integral, replacing the x squared with this, replacing the dx with that, and replacing the two limits with what I said here. Okay, so what goes well about this? Well, I can factorize out a 16 from inside this square root to get this. Um, and now you might recognize why this is good. Um, cos squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1 for any value of x. So therefore, 1 minus sine squared is always equal to cos squared. So I'll replace that with a cos squared. Um, this is a root of something times something else. Um, so root of something times something else is just root of something times root of something else. So I can split up into this. Root 16 is 4. Root cos squared is cos. And then, of course, 4 times 4 is 16. Cos, cos times cos is cos squared. And I end up with this integral, which is... So I've transformed this integral into this one, which makes it much easier. Now, it's still not easy um, because cos squared is hard to integrate. What you need to do is you need to use the double angle identity for cos. Um, sine squared, as we just saw, is 1 minus cos squared, um, which makes this 2 cos squared minus 1 because of the minus minus. And then rearrange for cos squared by adding 1 and dividing by 2. And now I can replace this cos squared here with this stuff here, which is much easier to integrate. So you get 16 times half just turns into 8. And then when you integrate, you don't need constants. So you can just factorize out an 8 and put it at the front. And now this is finally an integral that I can just definitely do very easily. Cos integrates straight to sine, and you divide by 2 because it's integration. 1 integrates to u. And now we just need to put these limits in. So sine of well, 2 times pi over 6 is pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Um, over 2 is going to be root 3 over 4, and then just plus pi over 6. Um, and then sine of 0, or 2 times 0, which is still 0, is still 0 plus 0. So these are just all zeros. So we end up with this times by 8 is that. And so that is the answer to the first integral, just there. So I'll replace that there, and now I can do the second integral. Now the thing about the second integral is it's basically exactly the same. Um, the substitution you have to make is x minus 4 is equal to 4 sine u, and then everything is basically exactly the same except for this bit here. Um, when x is 2, you get 2 minus 4 equals 4 sine u, which means um, dividing by 4, you get sine u as minus half. I'm just going to leave that there for a second and do the second one as well. When x is 0, you get 0 minus 4, which is minus 4, divided by 4 is minus 1, and sine u is minus 1. Now let's look at the sine graph. Sine is minus 1 at 3 over 2. Sorry, 3 over 2 pi. So u is 3 over 2 pi. Now the thing is, if you integrate a function and this number is less than this number, the integral will be negative, assuming that function is above the x-axis, which we know ours is based on the picture we saw earlier. So, but, but remember, I'm t the whole point of me taking away this integral is because I want to take away area from the picture. So this needs to be positive. So this number needs to be, because it's all above the x-axis, this number needs to be bigger than this one. So I need this answer to be bigger than 3 pi over 2. But that's okay, because at minus a half, there is a solution that's bigger than 3 over 2 pi, which is this one here. 2 pi is um, 12 pi over 6, um, and, and, and minus a half is pi over 6 along. So I need to do um, 12 pi over 6, take away 1 pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6. And I don't want this solution because that's that one. And integrating that would then give me a negative area because this one is further to the left than that one. Um, so I need to use this integral, this, this answer here. And I need to transform it to this integral. That's probably the hardest thing about um, this whole transformation, I think. From there, it's exactly the same as what we said before. So I'll do it very quickly. Everything is precisely the same. Um, even here, everything is still precisely the same. You do the same transformation again. Um, it only changes when you put in the limits. And again, putting in the limits to this is, again, not that easy. Um, 2 times this is 22 pi over 6, um, which is 11 pi over 3. And now, I know I don't like using mixed numbers a lot, but it's actually easier here too. It's sine of 3 and 2 thirds pi. Now, if we get out the sine graph again, Sine is the same every 2 pi. So sine of 3 and 2 thirds pi is the same as sine of 1 and 2 thirds pi because it just repeats itself every 2 pi. And sine of 1 and 2 thirds, well, sine of 1 pi is there, and another 2 thirds takes you to minus root 3 over 2. Um, divide that by 2 to get minus root 3 over 4, and then put that into there to just get a plus 11 pi over 6. Sine of 2 times, well, 2 times this is 3 pi. Sine of 3 pi goes up, goes down, goes up, and then another pi along goes back down to 0. So that's going to be 0. 
and then you just add 3 over 2 pi and now we just need to sort out this um, and again it's just some basic algebra and, 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 and fraction work eventually and you'll end up with this thing here which is this here so okay replace that in there and now we can finally finish it up two negatives be careful make a positive um, and then we can tidy that up times by four and we end up with the answer that we had a couple of times before so that is that method done that gets the same answer we had before and now for the final thing in this video that was considering this question right we just answered this question we worked out the area um, of these two yellow bits and before I asked the question of well what happens if instead of considering circles and you find these bits of area what if you consider spheres I'm a, I'm a bit worried this will freeze on me so I'll just give it a bit of time make sure it doesn't okay good um, what if you consider spheres? Now let's, let's, let's go back to this question. What was it about? Well, we had two, three circles, and what we wanted to know was how much of the middle circle isn't in either other circle. So like we don't want this bit because it's in the left-hand circle and this bit's in the right, but this bit is not in any of the other circles. So we want here, we want the volume that's not in any of the other circles that's in the middle circle. So we want these bits up here. And it actually goes all the way around the circle in all four directions, right, doesn't it? Um, it's a weird kind of funnily thing that goes to zero in the middle, but goes around everything. And, you know, in case you're thinking, oh, this is crazy, what on earth is this? Like, how are you going to do this? What's actually truly mind-blowing about this question that I posed here is if you know what to do, this is just objectively much easier than what we just did. Look at this. I've only got one slide to go. I'm going to answer this question in one slide. Look how long it took me to just do the previous um, thing that we did. It was seven slides, right? But I'm going to finish this. I'm going to do the 3D version of this in one slide, right? One slide. That was spoilers for a second, wasn't it? I'm going to do it in one slide. And the way that I'm going to do it is because is, is you learn this thing in, 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 in A-level further maths. Um, where if you have a curve like this, and again, I'm a bit worried this will freeze on me, but we'll just find out. Okay, good. Um, if you have a curve, we've discussed how the integral of this curve between here and here gives you this area underneath the curve. But there's this nice thing where you can bring the curve out into the third dimension and rotate it around the x-axis like this. And there's a little formula that uses a bit of integration where you can work out the volume as you spin around the x-axis. And that formula is not too difficult. Um, so let's go through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the same thing we had before. And my idea will be to spin this curve around the x-axis and then spin this curve around the x-axis again, take away the results, and that will give me all of the right-hand side volume. So then I just need to times by 2 for the left-hand side. Not by four, because I've already spun all the way around into the bottom, by two. So I'll, I'll spin this curve around, take away spinning this curve around, and then just times the answer by two. And the, volume, the, the, the formula for integrating around an axis like this is you times it by pi, because of course you do, pi comes up everywhere, and then you square y. So instead of just integrating y, remember last time I rearranged for y and then integrated? This time you rearrange for y squared. Uh, and it's between 0 and 2, of course, because, like before, between 0 and 2. Now, what's key here is that y, rearranging for y squared is much easier, right? Well, actually, rearranging for y squared is, is basically the same. It's just you don't square root to the end. But the thing is, integrating y squared is a doddle. There's no more square roots. So I don't have to do any of those substitutions. And, and like I said before, if you've got an integral between the same two limits, you can actually just bring them together. So I'm going to factorize out pi here, and then just move this integral into this one to get this. And now the 16 is just immediately cancel. This becomes a plus, because it's minus minus. The x squared's cancel, and I literally just have to do this. This is the whole thing. I, I mean, it's not. I have to double it at the end, remember. But this is the whole thing. That's all I have to do. It's so much easier. You think, oh, it's volume. It's uh, so. But here, I'm just integrating. It's fairly short. We're substituting numbers. You think, oh, it's volume. It must be much harder. No, the answer is just 32 pi, and I can do it in like seven lines. Um, it's just a, it, it is mind blowing to me that that question is so much easier in 3D than it is in 2D. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this random question about circles because I certainly did. 
Um, and, uh, and yeah, I don't know why you wanted to watch this or came across it, but if you did, um, I hope you enjoyed it.